So this video is going to cover building our malware analysis lab. So in order to analyze malware, we're going to need to set up a safe and secure environment as to not infect our own physical devices. And to do this, we'll need to install some software which is going to allow us to create and run some virtual machines. Now with these virtual machines or VMs, we're going to create two scenarios. One is a Windows 7 machine that can connect to the internet. So this will be needed when analyzing, say, a malicious Word document. The Word document contains macros, and those macros are used to download the malware from the internet. So in some cases, we're going to need that internet connectivity. The second scenario, again, contains a Windows 7 VM. However, this isn't going to be connected to the internet at all. Instead, we're going to create our own sandbox network, and all the network traffic is then passed on to a second Linux VM, which will capture the traffic and also have the capability to emulate some DNS and HTTP responses along with some other common ports. So this is used so we don't have to um, connect to the bad guy's server. So when we're analyzing the malware, we can play around with it as much as we like without having to worry about our network connections uh, tipping off the bad guys that we're playing around with the malware. So first of all, let's create the Windows VM as the malware we will be analyzing in this course will be samples that target Windows devices. So for running VMs, I personally recommend running VMware Workstation and this is what I've got on my screen at the minute uh, as that is what I use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Another option to consider is VirtualBox, however I won't be covering VirtualBox or using it in this course. Uh, just before we get started though with VMware Workstation, just be aware that there is a license for it However, these can uh, be bought legally on eBay for a couple of, uh, you know, for one or two pounds, they're not expensive. So get VMware Workstation Pro downloaded, hit up eBay for a license. Once it's installed, you should be at a similar position to me on my screen. So once we've got VMware Workstation installed, we need to create our Windows machine. And to do that, you're going to need a Windows ISO file. So I've already got one, if you don't, um, hit up Google, let's just type in Windows 7 ISO download. And from this top link here, you can download the ISO files. Now again, it is gonna ask you for a product key before you download it. So again, uh, you will need to uh, provide this. So again, whether it's eBay or something like that, uh, you will need to get, a product, get a hold of a product key first. Once you have that, we then need to go back to uh, VMware Workstation and if we just scroll to the top here, we want File, New Virtual Machine, and just click Typical for Next, and then browse to the location of your ISO file. So mine's here. Open that, click Next. You can enter the product key if you need, if you if you want to, you can always do that later on. Enter a name and the, the password is optional and click Next. And then give your VM a name. So I'm just gonna stick with Windows 7 here and click next. Now it's gonna ask you to specify the disk capacity uh, for your VM. Um, recommended size is 60 gig, and the uh, it's proposing here is 60 gig on mine. So I'm gonna stick with that and just change that to store virtual disk as a single file. Next, you're going to customize the hardware. So let's click on this option here. I think my machine's actually set to one, but I'd recommend just changing that to two. Network adapter for the time being, we're going to leave this as NAT. So NAT is network address translation. So this is where the VM is going to use the host's IP address so it's got internet connectivity. And we're going to need that internet connectivity next for downloading some of the malware analysis tools that we're going to be using over the course of the next few videos. So once we're happy with that, click close. And then you want to click finish and let that virtual machine build. It may take a few minutes or so. Uh, I'm not going to do this here, I've already got mine set up and ready, so I'm just going to click cancel and I'm just going to open up my virtual machine, which will be this Windows 7 one here. So I'm just going to click resume this machine and that's going to load up. Once it has loaded up, the first thing I want you to do is just disable some of the security settings on the virtual machine as we want our virtual machine to be as vulnerable as possible when the malware is running. So click on the start button, click control panel, and you will want to go to system and security, Windows firewall, 
and you can see here mine's disabled so to do that you want to click turn windows firewall on or off on the left hand side and just make sure these check boxes are next to the red shield once that's done just go back and you also need to go to advanced settings and you can see here windows firewall is off just confirm that by clicking on windows firewall properties making sure that is set to off click apply for that and OK we can then close this down and the last change I want you to make is just go to Windows Update and make sure Windows Updates are turned off by going to Change Settings and we want it never checked for updates as we don't want any uh, patches being rolled out to our virtual machines. So once that's done we can start installing some of our malware analysis tools. So you won't have a Chrome or Firefox installed by default so you might want to update your browser and once you have that let's start installing some tools so the first one we're going to install is WinSCP so that's going to be used for transferring files from our Windows machine to our Linux machine um, so you'll definitely need that installed after that install PE Studio now I'm not going to cover in depth too much what these tools do as that's going to be covered in later videos for now I just want to focus on getting the right tools installed making sure our lab is set up and we're good to go so P Studio can be downloaded from this link here and this is a great tool for statically analyzing malware so this will allow us to pull out hashes strings uh, check the sections of malware check API calls things like that and the download link is from the top right hand corner and then this option here so once that's downloaded the next one will be process hacker now process hacker is a great tool it's a bit like task manager in windows it allows us to see what processes are being generated by the malware as we're running it so you want to click on this downloads tab from the processhacker.sourceforge.io link and click up uh, click on this uh, setup.exe file here and get that downloaded and installed the next one we want to install is proc one or process monitor now this is a windows tool which allows us to capture all the registry and file system changes that are being made while the malware is running. Uh, so this is going to be really useful and give us a, a lot of information. So you'll want to click on this link here to get that downloaded. Now, as I mentioned, that is going to generate a lot of information. It's going to generate hundreds of thousands of events. Um, so in order to help us read that data, we're going to need a tool called ProcDot. Now, ProcDot is going to allow us to feed in the data from Procmon and generate some graphical views of the malware and it just helps illustrate what the malware is doing it generates like a graph so from the downloads tab you want this to download the latest windows version um, so make sure that gets downloaded next we want to install a hex editor so i use hxd and this can be downloaded from this location here and this is going to be really useful for looking at file headers uh, later on and again I'll explain in depth later what these tools are capable of and what information you're looking to get out of them um, so I'm based in uh, England and I, uh, my language is English so I'm going to be installing this one here uh, next we want Wireshark and click on this download link here for Wireshark.org and depending if you've got a 64-bit or a 32-bit ISO that you've, you've downloaded, uh, download the right Windows installer file from there. After that, we want to install a tool called Auto Runs. Now, Auto Runs is a great tool for identifying malware persistence mechanisms. So, once a malware, once a piece of malware has installed itself on a compromised host, it needs to be able to persist and survive a reboot of that machine. And there's different techniques that malware will use and this is a great tool for helping identify uh, what the malware is doing in that in that regards so once auto runs is downloaded the next one is one for looking at proxy traffic so easily identifying urls that are being called out by malware uh, now if this was my product i probably would have called it something different but fiddler is a great tool um, so let's get this downloaded uh, and just click on this download now tab and get that downloaded uh, so that's everything we need for the time being we might cover one or two other tools such as x well we'll definitely cover x32 dbg later but there'll be a separate video for downloading and setting that up but once that's uh, all your binaries are downloaded run them make sure they're installed 
uh, and uh, the latest updates are applied. Uh, a lot of them, such as P Studio, so if I look at my downloads tab here, I'll just be run, can be run straight away. There's no installation needed. So what I tend to do is just right click, drag to desktop and just do create shortcut here. And you can see on my desktop, I've just got a bunch of shortcuts to the uh, various tools that I use. So next, we are going to want to install Remnux. So Remnux is the Linux distro that I mentioned before, where we're going to be siphoning off our network traffic. So again, let's open up Chrome on our host machine and type in Remnux. And like I mentioned, this is the Linux toolkit for reverse engineering and analyzing malware. So it's got a load of useful tools built in. It's going to be really handy for us. So the download links here, this is going to give you an OVA file. Once you have that, I believe if you just go to VMware Workstation and it will be, uh, I think you, actually if you go to open on this one and then you can open the machine here. So again, once that's fired up and running, I'll just open up mine now. So I've got this one here, I'll just resume this now. And you will have a similar um, screen to this. Now I've already got a uh, command prompt open here and you can see I've run that for the command ifconfig. And the reason for that is now, as I mentioned before, we want to create an internal isolated subnet so that the, uh, our two machines can talk to each other. They won't have internet connectivity and it just creates that nice, safe and secure sandboxed environment. In order to do that, if you go to edit, virtual network editor, and it might take a minute or so just to load up, but I've got this on my other screen here, which I'll just bring across. And you can see here, these are the host only networks I've got created, so it's just the one. Uh, so DHCP is enabled, so any machine allocated host only will be given address within this range. So 192.168.233.1.254. So and what I mean by that is if I go back to my Linux machine, if I click right click on Remnux VM, do settings, and this, these are the settings I've allocated. Um, and we can see here host only, and it's on a host only network. So if I type in I have config there, you can see the internal address I've been given 192.168.233.128. So if I try and ping the internet now from this machine, I won't have internet access. There we are, network is unreachable. And if I just go back to my Windows 7 machine, I now want to put this in host only mode as well. So before we do that, actually, just like that, uh, let me just cancel that. We just want to create a snapshot of this now because we've got a nice clean machine with internet connectivity. So you just click on, take a snapshot, and just call that something like clean hyphen nat. So we've now, and then take snapshot, we've now got a clean snapshot we can revert back to that's got internet connectivity. Once that's done, click on settings. and change from NAT to host only. That will then give our machine an IP address within that subnet that we identified before. So if I click on CMD here and just do IP config, it might be a different address from what I had before. So we can see here this machine has been given the IP address 192.168.233.166. So what I want to do now is just configure this as a static IP on this machine so that that address won't change. So I'm going to go to change adapter settings on local area connection. I'm going to right click and press properties, internet protocol version four properties. And I'm going to say, use the following address, which is the one that was just allocated 192.168.233. And it was 166. The subnet mask, it'll ought to be set as a slash 24, which is correct. And the default gateway we are now going to set as our Linux machine. So if I just switch between the two, we're going to set it as this 128 address. So 
two, three, three, one, two, eight. And we're going to use the following DNS server 192, 168, 233, 128. Again, that one that's machine is going to be our DNS server. Click OK, click Close. And let's just uh, now see if we can ping that machine from our Windows machine. 192.168.233.128. And we can see there we're getting replies from that machine. And if we just go across to our other machine, ping 192.168.233.128. And there we have a nice sandbox network. It's a set of virtual machines now where we can uh, happily analyze malware uh, without worrying about infecting our host device or sending out network connections to the internet. So on this now, on the Windows 7 machine, I'd recommend again, creating another snapshot and just calling that one clean. And then just host only and saving that. So again, you can run malware on that and then revert it back to your nice clean snapshot. The last thing I will mention uh, for when we are doing any analysis where we are going to be connecting to the internet, I would, uh, well, you will need some sort of uh, VPN. Now I run NordVPN and you know, you need a VPN just so uh, you can mask your the IP address of your uh, home ADSL and broadband line. Um, so again, with this head to connect to my VM, I'll just click on any country there and that will then sign an IP address. So again, that's just sort of hiding my identity, hiding my true IP address from the attackers, which obviously we do not want to do and you need to be very careful about. So that's it for this video. We can now move on to doing some malware analysis and getting onto uh, using some of these tools that we've downloaded.